step away from Conference USA play on Saturday for UCF and a step back into the winner's circle for the Knights who overcome a 10-point halftime deficit to defeat a stubborn Buffalo team at Bright House Network Stadium. The final score was 23-17. to Hello again, UCF fans, and welcome to yet another edition of UCF Sports Today with George O'Leary. The coach is here looking good. Uh, I'm Pat Clark, and we're glad you're here as well. George, congratulations. We've talked before on this program about a tale of two halves. Boy, howdy, we saw that on Saturday night. We've also talked about getting complete, consistent performances from both your offensive and defensive units at the second time, and I think you'll agree that in the second half we saw a model of consistency from both, didn't we? We really did. I think it was a great fan, a great game for the fan base to sit and catch that game, and I think the second half was what you're looking for from offense, defense, and special teams and coverage, so I, I, I was pleased with that and, and pleased with the effort that went out and, and made some plays in the second half both sides of the ball. You know, I think there was a great misconception that this Buffalo team would come in here and just be a pushover, and that would, of course, come from people who otherwise didn't know much about Buffalo at all. It's a good football team. Turner yeah. Gill's good coach. This is a team that won the MAC conference, went to a bowl last year. They know how to play some football up there now. And they had a lot of players back. I, I, they were a good football team, and I think the difference in the game was was basically we tackled well, we blocked, you know, through blocks through the second half and then we made some plays both in the run and pass game and and, and again possession wise I, I think they only had five possessions in the second half and and uh, and we got the ball on a couple of them back so I mean it was it was a great effort second half it, it, you team. talk about possessions George in the first half Buffalo controlled the ball for about 18 minutes and just nine minutes in the second half 11 minutes for UCF in the first half but 20 minutes of ball possession time in the second half for your team if that's been been what we've been looking for and that was you know almost the opposite of last week as far as time is concerned so again good win uh, you know as far as the team's concerned uh, you know character win and uh, again I, I thought the clock management made it interesting well, and we're going <laughs> to briefly talk about that a little bit later but there is so much to talk about Bryn Harvey had a great night in the backfield uh, Brett Harge is getting his first start for UCF and certainly making the most of it. We'll take a look at some highlights of last night's big victory. 23-17 again was the final. All that straight ahead on UCF Sports Today with George O'Leary. Stay right there. UCF Sports Today with head coach George O'Leary is brought to you by Holler Classic, the official automotive group of the UCF Knights. Today's show is also presented in part by Bright House Networks. See how bright life can be. And Coca-Cola. Welcome to the Coke side of life. innovative anthrax vaccine, promising research on cancer, Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, and advanced laser developments. In their search for new answers and better solutions, UCF professors are awarded millions of dollars in research funding each year. Needless to say, we're all quite proud of them. UCF stands for opportunity. ISP Sports is the exclusive worldwide marketer of UCF Athletics. ISP, America's home for college sports. Welcome back, everybody, to UCF Sports Today with George O'Leary in the wake of UCF's 23-17 win over Buffalo on Saturday night. We mentioned that Brett Hodges gets his first start at UCF. He's a fifth-year senior. And, boy, he makes the most of it, George. 15 of 20 for 141 yards. He completed all 10 of his second-half passes. He ran 13 times for 71 yards. This is a kid who, uh, I think you even mentioned this in your post-game comments, is a very calming influence for some of the underclassmen. He really is. Uh, I think he went out, uh, uh, again, uh, I think he does one thing that's very, very difficult to teach. He has the poise to keep looking downfield and find open receivers. And, and again, I think that's contagious with the rest of the group out there as far as, you know, let's not panic let's get things done right and move from there I think the one thing that we have to get done is get the ball downfield more I think that's you know evident when you look at the tape but I think the big thing that he does is he moves the chains which is mm -hmm. what I want and that's and again possession time I think is critical as you mentioned earlier you know the second half the first half time of possession it was was the difference in the game the popular school of thought was that if 
any UCF quarterback was going to run with the ball, it was going to be Rob Calabrese. Uh -huh. uh, Turner Gill even said that in his post-game comments last night. Well, if, if, if UCF quarterback's going to run, it's probably going to be Calabrese. Well, here, here, you, here you go finding that Hodges has another weapon with his legs as well, apparently with this instinct to wait in the pocket when he's supposed to, when a play is like that, but if nothing is there, take off, which he did a number of times last night. He really night. did. I, I was happy for him and success he's having. And uh, again, you know, I think the big thing is give uh, offensive coordinator Charlie Taft some credit. I thought he was on the money uh, with the play call and a good mix of run pass and, and then kept them on their heels a little bit. All right, George, let's go ahead and take a look at some first half highlights. And your first possession was, well, a good one, and that would be an understatement. 14 plays, 68 yards. It covered 6 minutes and 13 seconds, and that was after you stopped Buffalo on a 4th and 1 play. Great play, great penetration on that. Okay, here we go with UCF's opening drive. Jamar Newsom, who had a great night, a 12-yard grab here that continues that opening drive on the evening. He caught 6 balls for a total of 37 yards, and here's Brett. And we talked about his legs. Watch the scramble here. And this was on a third down play that goes right up the middle to continue the drive. Uh, part of his 71-yard night on the ground. And then you'll see a play that gets all the way down to the uh, two-yard line, George. This is Newsom again with a 70-yard slant catch. Great play, great catch. And, uh, you know, that's a chip away at the defense. And that they did a great job of that. And this ultimately led to the touchdown, a two-yard touchdown run that would give uh, UCF a 7 to nothing lead. That, of course, is Brent Harvey, who had another great night, 25 carries for 98 yards and a couple of touchdowns. But after that touchdown, things kind of changed. Buffalo took control of the game. They started playing George O'Leary ball, <laughs> where, they'd, where they'd take that football and they would eat off time from the clock, and ultimately it was 17-7 to at halftime. And I know that you were not happy with your players at the break, and you even told the media in the aftermath of the game that you were quite verbal with regard to that at halftime. Well, it was, I was verbal, but it was, it was more, fellas, I'm going to take 22 guys out of the locker room and, you know, I'm going out to win this game and, and uh, I don't care what 22 it is, let's go play. <laughs> yeah, okay. But, you know, the big thing was the first half, I thought defensively, you know, we're, the cushion was too big and, and, and again, we, we weren't wrapping up on tackles. There was too much hidden yardage. Like last week's game with Southern Miss, there was 148 yards at the initial hit. Mm. That's way too many. We need more guys arriving at the ball, and uh, you know, so that basically a lot of that stopped. And I thought the second half last night we got that done, and they understood. Hey, here's what we're talking about. This goes back to your Bob theory, the the <laughs> body on body theory. Talk a little bit about that, George. Well, all week we talk about Bob. when I first mentioned it, they thought I was calling somebody. But <laughs> <laughs> when, I, when, I, when, when that whistle blows, you either should have a body on a body or somebody going to a body, especially offensively, uh, to finish the play. And we put a major emphasis on that all week and, and really for the last two weeks in practice as far as making sure you finish the plays. And I always like catchy terms, and I thought Bob was a – they could understand it real well without running a conversation with them about it. Yeah, so. Bob's is better than Robert because if you get Robert, <laughs> you got to come up with more words, and that just doesn't make a whole lot of yeah, sense. That's rest on the body. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, we're going to show pictures here in just a moment of the second half, but before we do, can a half played so well by a football team change the course of a season? We, of course, won't know that, but with regard to confidence, coming out of that first Well, half. I think that's the big thing I saw was the, the confidence grew as far as offensively. And, and really, offensively needs some good things to happen. And I thought they happened from, and as that took place out there, you, you could see the, the little more perk in their step as far as a little more bounce in their step. And I, I thought that played big time to our advantage. And again, that goes with your quarterback. I think he... You know, you use the word exudes all the time. I so saw I'll use that, but he exudes confidence, and uh, I think that carries over and it's contagious with the rest of the players. All right, George, off to the second half pictures. Again, UCF trailing 17-7 at halftime, and this is a pretty play. Kamar Aiken coming down with this one for a 39-yard catch. Talk about that one, George. Great catch, great over-the-shoulder catch. Big play. I think 34, was it 34 you sent? A 39-yard 39 39 play, yards. and here's Bryn once again 
Four yard touchdown run right up the gut, his second of the night, and UCF at that point had pulled to within three points at 17 14. Jarvis Gathers with a big night. He had three quarterback sacks on the evening, and a couple of them led to fumbles. Here's one of them by Darius Nall on the Buffalo 31 yard line. Great play. Big play, big play, and led to points, and uh, that's what we've been looking for from our defensive front. And I thought second half they got after it. Nick Katoy ties the game at 17 with a 44-yard field goal. That was a great drive, 8 minutes and 39 seconds off the clock, 14 uh, plays for 59 yards. And Derek Hallman uh, with a big interception on a fourth down play and a 23-yard return late in the football game. Great play, great way to end the game. And here's Jarvis one more time. They're going to force a fumble. Uh, and that's his third sack of the game that leads to a Terrell Troop uh, fumble recovery to seal the UCF victory. Four, count them, four forced turnovers in the second half alone for a defense that had not had a forced turnover all season long. They really got it going, and the bobs were going in they the second really half. They really did. They were running, going to the ball, and I, I think the big thing there was that the, the coaches made good adjustments at halftime, and, and the kids understood that. The adjustments made were really zero. Go, let's go play. Yeah. I mean, all the, because you know you can go out and make one or two changes at halftime. The, the kids, you know, they're focused and it's getting back on the field. And I, I think the key to that whole thing was that our senior leadership took over at halftime, and uh, I think they understood that. You know, let's go out and do things the way we're supposed to get it done, and that needs to carry on through the season. Well, you had said before, before you made the move, that Derek Coleman might be better playing at the, at the safety position than at the linebacker. You made the switch, and it's paying off. Certainly paid off uh, last night. It really, it? it really is. I think he's a very headsy player that has good vision. Uh, I think he comes up and, and makes plays when he has to make them in, uh, in the run game. And I think he understands more and more. I, I think that's a transition from putting the last guy back there instead of up at linebacker deal. But I think he's starting to see the field a lot better. Do you get the sense that Brent Harvey is getting stronger as each game goes on? And yeah. I mean during the game. He seemed to gain more strength and more energy as the game progressed last night. I think it goes hand in hand with your offensive line as far as sustaining blocks and getting some movement there. And the only thing I think that we really need with, with Brent is, and we got to address, is he needs to, when he gets down the goal line, we need to get that extra yard. And I think that's the key because that's the difference between field goals and touchdowns. Well, you had said after the first, you had carried the ball 31 times in, in the first game against Sanford. You said, we don't really want him touching the ball that many times, but he, he ran it for 20. 25 times last night. What's your philosophy well, on all that now? Has I, it changed a bit? or? Well, it hasn't. It, I think it was the timing of it, though, because uh, what happened was that we, the, he got some rest between plays when defense had, especially in the first half, defense was out there for some 10 play drives. So I, I thought the week before when he was running 31, it was three and out, and, and we were just getting him on the field too often. I, I watched him very closely, and in fact, uh, Coach Gotzi asked, You want to get. I said, no, we just came off a seven, eight play drive. He, he should be able to go. And, and, and again, I think as he plays more, he gets better. I really do. Well, he certainly showed that last night in that 23-17 victory. Another break. We're back with more with George O'Leary right after this. The Knights Kids Club, presented by Chick-fil-A, is an exciting new club just for kids 8th grade and under. Call 407-823-6165 or log on to UCFAthletics.com to join now. Look, throw deep downfield to Aiken, overthrow. Did he get it yet? Kamar Aiken makes the catch inside the 20 to 17 yard line. It looked like it was going to be overthrown. Kamar Aiken has got a couple of drafts. Great play that uh, helped lead to a UCF comeback in the second half of last night's 23 17 victory over Buffalo. Pat Clark and George O'Leary back on UCF Sports today. It's worth noting here 
that you coached your 150th <laughs> career game as a college head coach last night. George, that's a lot of football. Sure is. Do you have any, I know, I know what you're going to say. I was, I'm going to ask you if you have any great memories of great victories, but I can, I can, you want me to tell you what you're going to say? Sure. That you only remember the losses, right? You're right about that. But, you know, we've had some great victories, and, but, you know, it's funny. I, when, every, when I run into all the kids who have played in the past for me, I, right away something clicks about what was he involved in, whether a win or a loss. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, it really does. And, and Is that then, a bad thing or a good I, thing? I think it's a good thing because the kids, <laughs> the kids read my face right away, yeah. <laughs> what I'm thinking about. So. Well, that's good. We're going to shift gears here a little bit and talk about your academic services because I know that's something that you're very proud of here. And when you get into a young man's living room to ask him to come and play football for you, it's not all about playing football. You make it abundantly clear that if you're going to come and play football at UCF, you are expected not only to go to classes, but you're expected to graduate from here as well. There's no question. I think the big thing uh, with all that, and I'm very proud of it, is that you know we promise them that. And the only promise I make to any of the players is I'll make sure that if they want to graduate, I'll make sure they graduate. And I think the family's involved in it, and I always talk about a family scholarship, and uh, the family understands that they're in this thing too, and they the support's needed if the youngster's going to go through college uh, and get the support he needs. Take a look at the academic services program at UCF right here. Well, I think for student athletes, I think um, college is much different than high school academically. Um, one being uh, there's not a whole lot of homework in college. Um, you typically have a midterm and a final, whereas in high school, you know, your, your professor or your teachers are more likely to follow up on you consistently. They come in kind of feeling like it's still high school and their day is, you know, just a couple hours. However, once practice starts and, you know, meetings and things of that nature, you know, school often kind of takes the back seat those first couple weeks and we have to instill in them the importance of school and time management and right from the beginning that that's their priority and they have to attack school first and then figure out how to make everything else fit around it. In college, Everything is based on you, like we don't have our parents or the parents there to push us and like do your homework and stuff like that. Everything's so independent. It's, it's an improvement for me because now that I got study hall, but it's just like more work. Uh, like in my composition class, we do a lot of reading responses, essays, but besides that, it's pretty easy if you just study. One of the things that we do, and specifically during, through the football program, is we really micromanage their time. Um, so through you know some of our programs, our study hall, their class schedule, um, and the football schedule, and weightlifting, and what have you, um, the bulk of their day is already scheduled out for them. Think it's serious about it, like when we're on our way to class, they have our academic advisor there taking road, and they're making sure that we're like 10 minutes early each class. They tell us like when we have assignments, because you know we be on the road sometimes, and we won't pick up on it. They'll like, let us know, and then we got notes that they can get for us and like sometimes we fall back but they'll get us back on track. Coach O'Leary expects every student here to graduate. That's the one thing he stresses from the very beginning and that is the same message that we send them every single day. You know from the minute we see them you know we focus on academics. I study way more now than I did in high school so my grades I ended up with like a 3.1 that's like way better than how I did in high school and it seemed easy so. Coach will t promise every parent and every student athlete that we recruit that you know these young men will graduate from the University of Central Florida. Very cool, George. They touched a bit on budgeting time. You always have to budget your time when you're a college student, but when you're playing college football, trying to mix in going to class and other things, it, it gets very tough, especially for the freshmen. This is a culture shock for some of them. Time management. I, I think we spend time. They do a great job with the athletes, young athletes, as far as understanding that there's only so much time in the day and time management is very important. And that's probably the biggest thing the young freshmen have to learn coming from high school is that, you know, you have things that have to get done and there has to be priorities in your life. And I know as a head coach, it's always great for you to win football games, but I'm guessing that more than that, it's great for you to see a young man come in as a freshman and the metamorphosis in four, sometimes five years from that time that he is a freshman until the time that he becomes, it sounds kind of trite, a young man. Well, the maturity. I think the growing up maturity and the same mistakes they made as freshmen 
the seniors are looking down at the freshmen now going, what are they doing that for? <laughs> <laughs> so you, you get sort of a, a little smirk about it that they were doing the same things, but they've grown up and you know, more mature and getting ready for life. Yeah, good stuff, a nice piece. Another break, we're looking ahead to next week. Uh, Conference USA play uh, reconvenes with a trip to East Carolina. We'll talk about that game when we come back on UCF Sports Today with George O'Leary. Don't go away. Be sure to visit Buffalo Wild Wings in Waterford Lakes every Thursday night from 7 to 8 p.m. during the season to hear the George O'Leary Radio Call-In Show. Fans, here are your run for Ronald totals for the game. UCF had 311 yards of offense and two touchdowns for a total donation to the Ronald McDonald House of $511. McDonald's, I'm loving it. And welcome back, everybody, to UCF Sports Today with George O'Leary. Don't have a whole lot of time, but we mentioned early in the show, George, about the, the game clock and the play clock towards the end of last night's game. It didn't have any outcome, any, any effect on the outcome, but that could have, and it's a good thing it didn't, huh? Well, again, there was a clock management problem there, whether it was a clock malfunction. But, you know, I, I think most clocks you've controlled on the field. And, again, I'm sure there'll be an inquiry as to what took place there. But we lost some valuable time. Uh, and again, that's something that has to be avoided. I'm sure we'll check to see what, what happened there and get it corrected. All right. It's more Conference USA play coming up uh, this week as UCF travels to Greenville to meet East Carolina, then back here for Memphis. What do you know about East Carolina? They did lose to North Carolina by 10 points uh, on Saturday, but Skip Holtz always has a team that's ready. I'm guessing you'll be ready as well. Well, I think it's, we're back in the conference play, and it'll be a great matchup. And, again, our players understand the importance of conference play. And, you know, we, we went down to a conference game, so we got to get back on the winning side of the ledger there. And, Again, I expect a great ball game and a, a aggressive crowd, and uh, our players are going to have to go up and play very well. What typically concerns you most about East Carolina? Uh, just uh, the, 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 really the offense, defensive lines, and get great size there. And, again, we're going to have to get some chunk plays in that game. Well, congratulations and good luck next week. Thank we you. hope you folks make plans to join us for another edition of UCF Sports Today with George O'Leary next week at the same time. So until then, for George and everyone at UCF and ISP, I'm Pat Clark. So long, everybody. UCF Sports Today with head coach George O'Leary has been brought to you by Holler Classic, the official automotive group of the UCF Knights. Today's show was also presented in part by Budweiser, the perfect balance of flavor and refreshment. Open up a world of taste. By the energy-saving conservation programs of Tico People's Gas. Syntex Homes. For a better way to a better home, visit Syntex.com.